Body and how are we all doing today? This is a Sunday night live stream on the 9th of April 2023. And yes, it has been Easter Sunday. Hope you've all had a great weekend. Hope you've got plenty of gardening done. I certainly have here at the VegGround Podcast HQ. Now today, the main topic that I'm going to be up for discussing is when do you get your plants in the ground? These are your seedlings, maybe your tomatoes, your cabbages, your cucumbers. That's going to be coming up in just a minute. But first of all, let's see if anybody is out there. Uh, Adrian is out there. Good evening to you. Tower Bay Stream is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Bally Cillian is out there. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Philly SBB is out there. Good evening to you. Um, Idaho Gone Girl, all the way from Idaho. Good evening to you. Uh, who else have we got? got who else have we got uh jenny hunnett is out there hello everyone hope you're all well and having a good easter weekend i'm just planting some more potatoes in pots fantastic um yeah who's seen my video about planting out potatoes this week seems to have gone down really well uh digwell is out there says um chick 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 that says hi all in chick speak Indeed. Uh, Oracle is out there. What about everyone in my friend Stuart Jackson cement pockets on the other outlet? Hope you had a brilliant holiday. Indeed, he was on holiday last week, wasn't he? Uh, Kate Spratt is out there. Good evening, Veg Army. Happy Easter. Good evening to you. Anna Jones is out there. Good evening to you. Um, Stuart Jackson. Evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Nice to be back with everyone. Lovely to see you as always. Uh, hi, Grave Gas. Evening, everyone. Hope you've had a good week. Great weather for growing today in Suffolk. It's been a great weekend for weather, hasn't it? It's meant to change tomorrow, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, who else have we got? Rebecca is out there. Good evening to you. Happy Easter, everyone, she says. Um, and my dad is out there. Good evening. Thanks for today. Dad came around earlier for uh, roast lamb leg that we've uh, <laughs> really enjoyed today. Mint sauce, potatoes, vegetables, and delicious. And rhubarb crumble from my own rhubarb. Uh, rhubarb really early this year, I've got to say. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone has had a great day. Now, it is Easter Sunday, and this is before we get into the main subject. Usually on an Easter Sunday, we would do a Easter egg hunt on this live show. Um it kind of came a bit too quick and I realised I hadn't got any Easter eggs in. But I have came up with a different idea. Somewhere in the background, I've got a brand new tool. And if you can see it and tell me what it is, well, you've won the Easter egg hunt. So over to you guys right there. Uh, also added to that, I haven't got the phone line open. Uh, I've left the phone indoors and I only realized about two minutes too. So we'll go without the phone. But if you want to zap in, I've added a link. Oh, the link should be coming up in the comments right now. Uh, what I was just saying at that, uh, Stuart Jackson says, yes, thanks. I had a lovely time catching up with my daughter in Barcelona last week. Never walked so far. Fantastic. Fantastic. Turbo Stream says, it's been cloudy in Birmingham today, so I went on a 15-mile bike ride and erected my new tent. Yes, I, it has been a, a pretty um, chilly day today, but nice. Yesterday was beautiful and friday was for that matter sunny here i was down on the allotment yesterday i got so much done and, and uh, everyone came out and my skin's gone brown which it does as soon as the sun comes out and i put that down to being out in the the sun yesterday uh so much has been going on over the last week here scott ambler has joined hello to all good evening to you um um hope you are well Idaho says, a shiny little spade. Indeed. Yes, you have spotted it. Um, so can you tell me? It's probably a bit difficult to see, so I'll grab it, actually. This is it. This is my shiny new spade. I went into a garden centre on Friday. I saw it and I decided to buy it. It's called a perennial spade. It's quite a flat one, as you can see. Um I saw this type of spade at a show earlier this year, and I really liked it. And I thought, you know what, I can see that being useful. Nice size. 
And added to that, somebody mentioned last week that you can watch Garner's World on YouTube. So I finished the live show and I watched Garner's World. I saw Adam Frosty's in one of these and went out and got one. So very, very happy. I've yet to use it, but well done, Idaho, for spotting that. Tell me soon, Thursday and Friday were, however, sunny and warmy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, one shiny trowel behind your left ear. Not quite a trowel, but yeah, with you. And Anne White also spotted it today. Shiny new mini uh, spade. Absolutely. Um, let's, let's see. Let's see. So well done, everybody who spotted that. Oracle says, old school, drop the white front, sit in the soil. If you're okay to sit on, it's not too cold and the plants will be okay. That's nicely bringing us into this main subject I want to find out is when do you get your plants outside? When do you plant them out? So let's let's get into that. Um, so we, we've spoken before that it's often too early to plant many of our plants out. I think last week somebody was asking about when to get beans or when to get squash plants out. And we were all saying, hold off because it gets a little bit too cold. So I always find tomatoes, cucumbers, courgettes, the tender plants, mid-May is about right for me. But this week I've got some cabbages outside. We've got onions outside and in the ground. We've got potatoes planted. Um, so I feel now is about the right time. And I would actually say we're a couple of weeks later than behind than normal. But that's about the right time to start getting some of the more hardier plants into the ground. What do you guys think? Let us know. And what signs do you look for? Uh, Kate says, managed to get down to the plot today. It was lovely to be out there. Kate, I, I saw you've been having a few problems. I'm glad you you managed to get down there today, though. So fantastic work. Uh, Digwell says, I bet Kate and Phil had a chilly day. Indeed, indeed. Well, hopefully they'll... Uh, did they, no, they're camping, aren't they? Camping up near you this week, if I remember correctly. Uh, Amanda has joined over on the Facebook group. Lovely to see you. Anybody else watching in the Facebook group, I may not see your name. So just let me know who you are like Amanda has done here. Now, Jenny says, I have onions out growing nicely. Peas are taking off and start, starting up their support. Broad beans doing well. I will be planting potatoes in with my peas to maximize space and easier to protect. That's a good idea. Now, funny enough, you mentioned onions. When I was down on the allotment yesterday, I, I pulled up and one of my neighbours came up to me and, with a tray of onions and said, here, do you want these onion seedlings? And I was debating whether it's worth getting my onions in the ground just yet because I'm a little bit unsure. Um, but he got his in and he handed me this lovely tray of onions, which I planted out as well. So, Peas aren't doing anything yet here, but I'm sure there is still chance. Broad beans, however, that's a good one you've mentioned there, broad beans. So usually I get my broad beans sown directly in the ground October, November. This year, however, they got killed by the frost, but I did plant them out in about beginning of March, if I remember correctly, and they seem to be surviving. So it just goes to show sometimes how hardy certain plants can be. Rebecca says, if really tender, I don't pot them out till May. Absolutely with you on that. I completely agree. Mid-May, usually when Chelsea Flower Show, that's normally the sign it's a good time to start getting plants outside, I believe. Turbo Stream, on today's topic, I planted out the cauliflower and cabbages and the Boxing Day onions. So two rows of parsnips and three rows of field beans. You've been busy, haven't you? Um, cauliflower and cabbage. Yeah, I've got loads of those to go out. So fantastic work. Uh, Stuart says, I've finished planting my potatoes today, all in buckets and bags, but I do have broad beans to pot out. I think they will have to be covered from the cold. Broad beans are pretty hardy, actually. My broad beans are outside, no protection, just got to clear a few weeds, but they're doing okay. They're even flowering. So, um, they should be okay. Uh, <laughs> Jenny says, I'm not jealous about your spade at all. I think you should send some out in the supporters club packs. If I could, I would. I've yet to use it, so I don't want to say anything until I've used it. But if, if it works out nicely, I'll let you know. Um, 
Kate says, I'm putting out some of my first tomatoes in the poly tunnel tomorrow. I'll be putting out the cabbages and cauliflower. I've put carrots and lettuce seeds in today. That's a good point. When do you plant your poly tunnels or your greenhouses up with the tender plants? Uh, I'll throw that out there as some extra questions too. Toby Stream says, I would direct sow the peas in a couple of weeks. French beans will direct sow no earlier than mid-May. I'm with you on that. Um, broad uh runner beans french beans don't go in the ground until may for me or well, they're not even sown uh idaho says i usually don't plant my plants out until mid-may idaho what about things like cabbages and stuff i know idaho obviously has a very different climate to what we have i believe are you still got frozen ground or is it starting to thaw so what about cabbages or other things like that when do you get those out there over in idaho uh, Nick Lorenz joined. Hi, I was here, just went to make a hot drink. I've got my hot drink going as well. Bally ceiling needed room on the polytunnel bench, so 50% of my cabbage, cauliflower, peas and onions from seed had to go out to make room and 40, 30 litre buckets planted up with potatoes. I'm with you on that, funnily enough. Uh, part of the reason I've been getting my plants outside is to make more room in my greenhouse. My greenhouse is just absolutely full up at the moment well it was full up i couldn't move in there so i've made a bit more space my leeks they're not in the ground but they're outside my cabbages and brassicas are slowly going outside um tomatoes won't obviously they stay in the greenhouse but now you know we've got the greenhouse down on the allotment as well so good digwell says my onions have been out since january were they onion sets or seed sown as i say i've usually grown onions from set a couple of times i've grown them from seed and they've not been brilliant this year i'm really trying with seed they seem to be doing quite well it's when they go in the ground that i fear the problem might be da, 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 da. right so jenny says i've ordered my fig leaf shark fin seeds last night let's cover the garden in vines yeah yeah I know yeah, they do grow. Well, what I've seen, they do grow big. Interesting stuff. Where did you get them from in the end? Oh, of course, uh, sometimes you have to take the risk to Stuart Jackson. I didn't see what he was on about, so we'll, we'll carry on. Time Stream. I seem to have regained my energy, so I'm keen to get on with stuff in case the fatigue returns. It's been a tough couple of years for me with energy levels. I know uh, Adrian Turbo Stream has suffered quite a bit with... Um, uh covid over the last couple of years so hopefully you're doing okay now and yeah I, i've got sympathy with you chris taylor has joined good evening everyone good evening to you i hope you are well and Stuart jackson i have started selling plants already 150 pounds yesterday all full of brain tumor charity so chilies and lemongrass plants went down well that's fantastic isn't it fantastic already doing well that's great to see. Rebecca, I've got plenty of things in my poly tunnel whilst I'm waiting for my tomatoes to grow. I want to use the space to put onions, beetroot and lettuce. I shall see how it goes. So, yeah. Um, so plenty of, th I think from what I'm reading, a lot of us are having the same sort of trouble. Our, our, um, our poly tunnels, our greenhouses are full of these seedlings. And trying to get them outside can be a bit of a problem so what are the factors that you generally look for when it comes to planting out my voice went really high there didn't it when you're planting out your plants for me as i've said with a tender plants mid-may is normally the the safest bet for me what we usually do is take our last frost date which for me is usually around the end of april and then we had two weeks just to be careful and then we would look at planting our plants out. Uh, you can find your last frost date online. A quick search will tell you when that is. And that's usually a good guide, but it's not foolproof. I still keep a close eye on the weather to see if we're going to get any but cold weather, then I've got to keep the fleeces handy. It is possible for it to still get a frost at the end of May. I think, did we, was it last year? We had a frost at the end of April or something that, decimated a lot of people's crops but then it, as i said with a greenhouse i'm wondering if i can get some tomatoes actually inside the beds of the greenhouse 
Um, I also did a few more barrow runs to the bottom gate to keep topping up the leaf mold bins. I'm, in I'm addicted to making as much leaf mold as possible, says Turbo Stream. Indeed, yes. Uh, Idaho is saying it's starting to thaw. I could probably get the brassicas out, lagging behind with sowings indoors and clearing beds, slacker. So just starting to thaw out that, you know, we're really lucky with our weather here. We haven't had a frozen ground. So uh, that's that's really interesting to hear that. Uh, Richard Gold has joined. Hello, all. Happy Easter. Good evening to you. And Ernie has joined saying good evening, viewer. Good evening to you. Um, Katie John Rambo McDonald. Good evening, all. I planted, I accidentally planted over 70 tomatoes. Hopefully, give them away to some of the local community. I know exactly how you feel there. We've got way too many tomato plants, but we never, um, we, 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 we'll use them, we'll find uses for them. But 70 is quite a few. But when you grow your own, you do need a lot, I think, anyway. Uh, Oracle says the broad beans. I was saying to take the risk and get them out. Plenty of time to replace them if anything happens. That 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 makes a lot of sense actually. That is, you know, but things like broad beans, cabbages that are pretty frost tolerant can be okay. Uh, Rebecca says we're also keen to get going, aren't we? Indeed, we are. We just don't want that nasty surprise frost. What I was saying earlier, you know, it's been pretty cold this year. I feel it has anyway. That. You know, it, I don't even feel it's a safe time to get many plants out. I reckon I'm about two weeks behind to where I normally am because it has just been a little bit on the chilly side. Certainly through March, cold and wet. Um, it's starting to warm up now, but still not what I would say amazing warm. Uh, Digwa said he got his onion seeds outside in January and they're from sets and seed sown onions all outside since January. Fantastic. So onions are obviously a lot hardier than we give them credit for. Jenny says, I've loads of brassica seedlings, plucking up the courage to move them out. Seeds for sharks in fat melons from sea spring seeds. Fantastic. So, yes. I took a chance with my brassicas on getting them out. What I often do, actually, is uh, when I'm in a garden centre, I actually have a look and see what plants they have available outside. Now, it's a bit unfair because they do have a bit of protection. I've got to admit, I did see they were having even the, the tender plants out, the, t the tomatoes, the, the chilies, all in pots, obviously, on their shelves and stuff. But they, they didn't look like they were in a position where they get brought in overnight. But to see the brassicas outside, even in places like the range and things like that, where they're not protected in any way as as such, uh, to see those were outside for sale gave me a good feeling that it was a good time to start getting the brassicas out. Of course, it's not foolproof, but it was just a good indication. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Money Boots has joined. Hello, all. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, too, buddy. Um, Turbo Stream says, my broad beans were direct sown in mid-March. If I transplant them, they seem to get checked by the weather and slugs. The direct sown, sown ones always come up, and when they are ready, always do okay. It's always good to, you know, I, I, I always think it is good to try and see what's what does come up better? I always tend to sow my seeds and then move them out. But direct sowing, if they do come up better, often they catch up anyway. But but if they do, okay. Uh, the biggest problem I find is rodents with those sort of things. I've had, you know, my potatoes, you saw in the video actually that went out this week. My potatoes, we had a squirrel or something try and, excuse me, dig the potatoes out. Um. So Katie John Rambo McDonald, getting tomatoes out for the daylight and heat, bring them all in the kitchen every night. It's quite the job. I know how you feel on that. Uh, I tend to, I, I'd like to think of my system that I have as like a, um, like a, uh, what's the word? It's like a factory system. They start from one area and they move along in order to get acclimatized so they at the moment they're starting in the kitchen then they go in the greenhouse then they go in a cold frame and then they go outside um news talking of a cold frame i spoke last week of trying to use a 
an old fridge, a bottle fridge, as a cold frame. Um, it failed. <laughs> it was. I think it'd be fine during the winter, but when the weather gets warm, it cooked a lot of the seedlings. It just got so hot. Uh, was it Monday, Tuesday? It was very warm down here. And I came home. I opened those doors and steam just came out of the fridge. So I won't be advising that. Kate says, with my alarm being further away, I've been sewing in the house. I'm really running out of room. I've got a picture of that coming up a little bit later, actually. Uh, Digwell says, most of my seedlings are out of the greenhouse now. Just chilies, aubergines, eggplants to Idaho. Um, and tomatoes left in, really, but keeping an eye on the weather. Yeah, I'm, I've still got my chilies and my aubergines in the kitchen. Only my tomatoes are in the greenhouse. I'm thinking they might do better in the in the greenhouse, but they're just still a little bit too small for me to take that chance just yet. Uh, Lim B has joined. Good evening to you. Um, we are discussing when do you get your plants outside? When do you feel it's safe to plant out your plants? Turbo Stream, I also weeded the gooseberry bed and mulched them too. Lots going on, isn't there? It's been a, a very productive weekend, I find. Um, we, you know, we, I went down, where do I start? Monday, I spent a bit of time at home. I was going to go down Elon, but I ended up spending time at home. Got a load of glass for the greenhouse. The greenhouse is very nearly completed down on Elon, the second greenhouse that is. Um, I've been sowing a load of seeds, been tidying up various things, creating areas, uh, planted out some cabbages, lots of stuff just going on. Down on the allotment yesterday, built a new bed. Finished off planting my potatoes. Um, what else did I do? I planted out my onions. Everything's just coming together. It's been a really busy, busy weekend, which is absolutely fantastic. So please do keep sharing. When do you get your plants outside? Now, as I said, I'm coming back to what was mentioned about hardening off and why I do my production line. That's what I was looking for. Uh, so. I only, I can't be bothered in all honesty with this whole thing about taking plants outside the, during the day and then moving them back in, in the, at night. I cannot be bothered because it's just too much like hard work for my liking. And that's why I produced the production line, or what I call my production line. It used to obviously include the heated propagators, but this year we're not using them. But my seedlings mostly start in the kitchen. Some might start in the greenhouse. And when they germinate and get pricked out, and I feel they are strong enough, they then go into the greenhouse. Just a little bit cooler, get a bit more light, and hopefully encourages them to grow a little bit better. Biggest problem in the greenhouse at the moment is slugs and snails, but we're getting hold of that. When I feel that they should survive outside in the cold frame, which again is a little bit cooler, it doesn't have a top in the cold frame. I've put over some fleece. That's when they go out to there. Again, see how they get on. If they survive that, then they go outside completely, cover them with a fleece. But hard enough for me is just one of those processes that I don't know if it's completely necessary in all, in all honesty, but I find a production line like I have it works nicely. Uh, Jenny says, I haven't sown my tomatoes, etc. yet. I have too many to rotate. They will catch up. There's still plenty of time. It's not like aubergines or chilies where they, they need such a long growing season. There's still plenty of time to sow those. Toby Stream says, my tomatoes haven't germinated yet, but the sweet potatoes, sweet peppers, sorry, are just starting to show. Excellent. Excellent. Sweet peppers are really behind us yeah. But excellent stuff. One of my tomatoes is 24 inch tall and in flower. I saw it as a seedling in it with the chilies and potted it on. So it's a volunteer. It sounds like it's a volunteer one. Never. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Lim B says, I planted up my runner beans and I can see them shooting up in my greenhouse, of course. Makes me happy. Also, my sunflowers are on the way. Fantastic. Um, we were discussing that earlier, wasn't it? Sunflowers, runner beans. Um, Great to see how they get on, actually. Digwell says, some say that hardening off is a waste of time. I've got to admit, I'm kind of in that, that, that view 
unless you have a heated greenhouse, then I feel it is necessary. And what I mean by that, if you've got a heated greenhouse that is at 20 degrees all the time, and then you then take those plants outside straight away, and it's, you know, might be 15, 20 degrees during the day, but night drops down to two, three degrees. That's where I think it's a problem. If it's not a heated, if it's not a heated greenhouse, then I don't think you have the problem. My personal opinion, but um, happy to debate that if anybody has any thoughts on that. Um, for me, I mean, if weeds are growing, then we know it's warm enough outside for plants to grow. That, that's always the key thing I look for as well. Stuart Jackson, I will be in a greenhouse all this coming week as I'm, on, as I'm still on Easter break. So look out for pictures next week. Can any recommend a runner bean good cropper? Thanks, team. Um, there are runner beans coming out in the supporters pack in May, so don't worry too much. But if anybody has got a good runner bean, then please do share it. I look forward to seeing your photos, Stuart. Uh, lucky you having this this time off. I've got to say, I would love it. Um, Oracle says I agree, Digwell. I have never hardened anything off straight in and hope for the best. Um. Yeah, I, I, again, I'll be interested in the science. It's one of those things everybody says that you have to harden off or it's a good idea to harden off. But I think there's still a bit of debate and it does depend on what the plant is. Anna Jones says, first week of June for tender stuff up here in Northumberland. Not just frosts, but also strong winds can really ruin young plants. That's a good point. Very good plant point. I was focusing a lot on the weather Strong winds. Very good point. Didn't think about that. I mean, I do. I don't know if anybody else does this. When I'm in the greenhouse, I do brush my hands across some of my plants to try and harden them up and, and relate or get that strength going. But I don't know if that, again, makes any difference. Uh, Ni uh, Nigel Digwell says he's got no idea what this volunteer plant is, but it's possibly a vine tomato. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Uh, Muddy Boots says a bench master is a very good run at bean. There we go. Bench master. That's one to try. Charles Dowding only hardens courgette, tomatoes, peppers, and the like. Yeah, they're tender plants. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Again, I come from it if if it all depends on that constant temperature. I think anyway, is you know, my heated greenhouse, my unheated greenhouse, sorry. Temperature drops overnight, and it can go down to about two degrees. Um, so I think it's all about that nighttime temperature. Jenny says, I'm looking to get a second zippy greenhouse to help with the production line. A little protection and easier if I choose to get them out for a bit. Charles dialed in, doesn't harm off, just uses fleece. Yeah, again, I, again, I, I, I kind of agree with it. I, I wouldn't say I hard things off, but I do move things along um, to different areas to to try and do that. Again, my my thing. Money Roots says, hardening off just reduces the shock to plants. I do harden plants off because the cold frame is an overspill for the greenhouse, like myself. Absolutely. Um, it, perhaps that's something we should experiment with, is whether hardening off does make a difference. That might be something we'd look at. Uh, Nicola, I picked up some container from a micro brewery. Going to cut the bottoms off to make cloches. Fantastic. I love all this uh, second hand or, or, or making things out of what we have. I always do think that's a great idea. Uh, let's quickly have a look at some of the photos that have came in this week. To the Veg Grower podcast. Uh, quite a good collection, I've got to say, this week again, as always. So, obviously, these are photos that have been sent in from you guys watching. First of all, Turbo has planted out his brassicas, and as you can see, using the fleece to protect them. That kind of tallies up with what we're talking about today, doesn't it? I also think when it comes to brassicas, it's well worth protecting them from the pigeons and the the uh, carriage white butterflies as well. 
Now, he's also spoken a lot about him making his leaf mold. He, this is his leaf mold bin that he's using. That's a lot of leaf fall, isn't it? Well worth it, though. Leaf mold is so underrated, in my opinion. Uh, and last week we spoke about growing salad leaf, and Tabe said he's never had much success. This year he's trying these out to grow his salad leaf. So great stuff. Hopefully we'll see more in the future with how he gets on with that. Uh, Scott Ambler is giving Bukashi a go. This is something we've had on the podcast a few months back, but back in December, um, talking about Bukashi. And it's something I've been experimenting with. Bukashi is a type of composting system, and it, I'm quite impressed with it so far. Obviously, we'll see what happens when it gets used. Um, he's also been tidying up the fruit area on his i think it's his garden or maybe his allotment and this is what it looked like before and this is the after effect fantastic work also been planting out some strawberries but what a difference what a difference fantastic uh chili kate has had their allotment for a year i think she's out camping this weekend she said uh in a year that's fantastic work isn't it to turn that around and um become quite a productive patch fantastic work sarah is after help identifying these three types of potatoes this is something that went up in the group i think a lot of you guys have been helping out and advising her which is great to see three different varieties of potatoes unfortunately the worst thing happened it's happened once to me the the the, the sea potatoes got knocked over and all mixed up so she doesn't know what potatoes are what Stuart is asking about this flower on the rhubarb. Again, everyone jumped in to help and said, snap it off. Actually, I've got a video coming out soon about rhubarb for this very reason. So um, we know what it's like. These, it's a, been a stressful year for the rhubarb, I feel. But uh, first rhubarb crumble we've had here today. Absolutely delicious. We were talking about uh, overcrowding of seeds and what have you. And this is Kate's... Um, garden table absolutely full of plants it looks fantastic though doesn't it and they seem to be doing rather while they're well outside uh finally ian meadows of course has uh finished building his beer garden um i'm not quite sure that's what's meant by a beer garden but whatever floats your boat of course or floats your your beer of course uh not not quite for me but uh that's because i don't drink so please do keep sending those photos in. You can email me or send them to me via email, richard at eventgrowerpodcast.co.uk. Post them in our Facebook group or send them to me via social media. What a great collection of photos. I think it's always great to see these photos and see what everybody else is doing out there because it gives us a bit of inspiration, gives us a great idea. And also I've noticed, you know, in the group, a lot of people are com or starting conversations up with this, which is exactly what it's there for. Uh, Nigel says, oh, no, we read that one. Uh, a few years ago, I popped brassicas out too early. Some leaves had purple patches. It slowed them down, but they picked up and produced a decent crop. I think this is something we're going to have to... I, th I think this is something we're going to test out later on in this year, actually. I think... That we might just take a tomato plant and take it straight out or harden some off. So interesting to see how that goes. Uh, that leaf mold is impressive indeed. I mean, it will reduce down by about three quarters, I reckon. But it just goes to show how much wasted material can be used. Um, Jenny says, the seeds I have mothered, I harmed off. The others may go a little stroppy and flop, but soon get over it and grow on. If heavy rain is due, I will cover if newly planted. Yeah, good idea. Um, excuse me. I was out late last night, went to the pub, believe it or not. Um, yeah, um, heavy rain is one of those things we've got to consider when it comes to planting out our plants as well. A lot of things to think about when it comes to our young plants. Um Nigel's hoping to plant out shallots next week. I'm hoping to get more of my onions out, depending on how these ones have done. Certainly more of my garlic. Um, potatoes are planted. Uh, yeah, 
that's, that's an idea. Is anybody going to be getting anything outside in the next couple of weeks or in this next week? Let's let's do that. Turbo stream. I've topped that leaf mold bin up three times, Kate. There's masses of leaves delivered to our allotment, so why not take advantage? I wish we had it delivered to our allotment, I'll be honest. It would go down so well. Uh, Mark potato tubers with a Sharpie. Excuse me. That's an idea, isn't it? Mark them with a Sharpie. Stop that from happening. That is a very good idea, Nigel. Very good idea. Uh, Limby, those plants look lovely. And Kate says that's my kind of beer garden. Anna Jones says great photo, everyone. Uh, as does Kate Spratt, indeed. Um, Oracle says, I never knew you were teetotal, Richard. Never make fine wine for me alone. I wouldn't say I'm teetotal. I just don't drink. I'm always driving, so uh, I just don't drink for that very reason. Turbo Stream, lovely pics again. Nice to see others' plots. Indeed, it is. Always nice to see others' plots. So please do keep sending those photos in. And don't forget, you can take videos of a plot tour. It'd be good to get a plot tour going, actually. Is anybody... If we had enough videos for next week, would a plot tour session work? Uh, let us know. Digwell, the colour of the light shoots was a clue to solving Sarah's potato problem. Yeah, I saw that. Um, and and that, it makes a lot of sense. Different shoots for, you know, from the potatoes from different varieties and can tell you just what is what. Good, good point there, Digwell. I think that was a, a good clue. Uh, allotment. Ditto, oh, sorry, to Nigel. Ditto about the marker on the seed potatoes. I've never thought about markering my seed potatoes, I'll be honest, but I think I might do that for in the future, next year. My worry, my only concern, in, would the chemicals in the permanent marker pen seep into the potatoes and affect them in the future? I guess it wouldn't. But that was my only worry. Um, talking of which, I had a question this week that, Adrian, if you're out there, you might be able to answer. And it was about the sheep's wool compost. If sheep are dipped in chemicals and stuff, is all that chemicals going to be left in the sheep's wool? I think I've had this question before, and it's one I'm going to throw out there to anybody else. Jenny says, my bare root rhubarb has only just came through. I was starting to think it had rotted away. Um, French grow rhubarb seeds go well. When would you plant them outside? That's a good question, actually. Very good. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Timely question, Jenny. I just moved so earlier this week, I moved one tray of the rhubarb that I've grown from seed to the cold frame. They're very young, very small at the moment, and they seem to do okay. So today, I've moved the second tray out to the cold frame as well, and the first tray is got into on on top of my bench if you like so i think they're going to be okay outside i would still offer them a bit of protection i think i'm going to need to pop my rhubarb seedlings up quite soon but they should do okay outside now um, or they seem to be doing or my ones certainly seem to be coping outside now uh kate says i can oh Kate says I can do a video for next week. Fantastic. A video tour would be great for next week, please. Um, Jenny says potatoes going in next to peas tomorrow if rain allows. That's what we we're talking about. Uh, I mentioned earlier when you put any plants outside. Ian Bennett's just restarting the veggie pod, hoping to get tomatoes out from the greenhouse before eight weeks in Spain. So daughter, daughter just needs to water and maybe eat. I tell you what, Ian, in the veggie pod, I don't know what size. Have you got a, small, a medium veggie pod or what? But the, the tomatoes will romp away in there. They grow really, really well in there. Almost too well. Um, so fantastic to, fantastic to see. Idaho says, we cannot get Sarpo Myra potatoes over here. Finally found a company that had them, but instantly sold out. I did order some Charlotte potatoes instead. Interested to try these varieties not normally seen here. Yeah, I think Charlotte are very, very common over here. Sarpo Myra become common because of the blight resistance. But uh, I always think it's interesting how... Um, particularly how things are different for you, Idaho, to us over here. And this is what having these conversations makes so great. 
My tire bike stream says, I do intend to shoot a video. I keep forgetting to take my lapel mic. I need to find it and put it in my pannier bag so I don't forget. Yeah, we. Yeah, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Uh, when you see the grow along video, I actually attached my wireless microphones, but the battery ran out halfway through, so I had to rely on the GoPro microphone, which is rubbish, but it turned out pretty good. Um, Nigel says, you do not eat the sea potato. Another alternative is to use a water-based marker. Now, I know you don't eat the sea potato, but everything grows from that sea potato, and is all that the chemical is going to go out to the other seed potato, the other potatoes. That's that's what I was thinking. I would guess it's going to be very, very minute if it does at all. Um, saying that, if permanent markers are available for kids, it's probably not poisonous. I don't know. I don't know on that. I don't quote me on that at all. I'm just thinking out loud. Stuart says, I'm up for a plot tour next week. Something was said about P and potatoes planted in the same place how does this work thank you if it works i will try this as my plot is small i was interested in that as well um and that was jenny i think peas and potatoes in the same place but yeah if you can do a plot tour for next week that would be great uh then we can do a plot tour uh video i i actually shot a plot tour of my home plot my allotment but i never got it i never edited both of them so I might reshoot them for next week. Uh, Adrian says, I would not think in the wall, but possibly in the poo, but should not affect anything as it would need to be well rotted when used. Okay, that's the question that was asked about the uh, the wall compost. So probably not there. I can't remember who was asking. I think, was it Ballycillian who asked? I think it could be. Um where have we digwatt says video tour i bet it rains now <laughs> yeah i bet it does as well but still do it if you can do it in the rain that would be even better april showers after all uh hence i would use my gopro for that obviously uh ian granddaughter here for a couple of days this week so plant peas in the greenhouse as i can leave them without any yeah, he must have got lost along the way. Um, find out why, more than that. Digwell says, Sarpo Myra may be blight resistant, but they are not the best taste. I agree with that. I completely agree with that. They are not the best tasting potato by far, but the blight resistant just means we get something out of them. They're not very good for roast potatoes either, I found, despite being sold as good roasters. They, they're really not. They don't crisp up enough i found um adrian says my sheep have very few chemicals in them apart from occasional medications there we go uh, that's what we like to hear adrian so uh, absolute fantastic to hear that jenny i'm growing potatoes with my peas i'm growing two rows of peas with potatoes in the dead space down the middle oh right so if you think potatoes down the middle peas growing up like around them that makes a lot of sense now that'll work i can i can see that working quite nicely actually because that'll keep the potatoes cool too um good stuff that's a good idea nicholas says i have astroturf in front of my static i found a mustard plant growing on it from last year's seeds i expect yeah uh, yeah seeds seem to pop up everywhere don't they these weed seeds uh now uh digwell says i wouldn't worry about the marker pens i've just started my compost trial and i wouldn't plant anything in four of the 15 the marker pen might make them taste better <laughs> yeah you 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 saw the compost trial i'm doing with six different types of, of compost i, I found it I think it was Kate who shared last week the video of the New Horizon compost that she picked up. And it, it was interesting that the, the bag that I got wasn't anywhere near as bad as Kate's bag. I thought that was interesting anyway. But uh, I'm, I'm intrigued to see with the compost trials what is going to do the best. 
Um, Stuart says, marker pens, the ink would be a very small amount, most probably a lot less than plastic in your fish and chips. Yeah, good point. Very good point. Okay, I will do this marker pen in the future then. That makes a lot of sense. The sample range is struggling a bit now as the blight mutates, same as the crimson tomato varieties. That's true. I know I predicted that was going to happen. Uh, blight has always adapted. That's why I always try and grow several different varieties of potatoes to try and stand a chance. Same as tomatoes as well, different varieties to try and stand a chance of avoiding things like blight or other issues that we might have. At this point, I just want to remind everybody to please do give us a thumbs up, a like. Please do subscribe if you're not already subscribed uh, or follow or whatever the social media platform might ask you to do. And don't forget to click the notifications so that you know when we go live. I know most of you know it anyway, um, but uh, I've got to ask anyway. Uh Digwell says, my new horizon was a different type to Kate, but it was just as bad full of gravel. I had no gravel in my new horizon. So this is really interesting, really interesting how the, the quality control is really all over the place. Um, I can remember having fish and chips in newspapers. Swear the ink added to the taste. Good point. That's a very good point, isn't it? Ah, oh, yeah. You've persuaded me, guys. You've persuaded me to not worry about the marker pen. Uh, I will not worry about it in the future. Uh, right, if you do want to zap in, as I said, I forgot to bring the phone out with me, but if you want to zap in, the link is going up in the comments right now. Click on the link and you can appear on the screen with me. Um, as I... <coughs> <laughs> excuse me uh, as i said when do you get your plants outside and um are you prepared are you prepared at the moment for your plants to go outside i've been talking a bit about growing cabbages and obviously a lot of the soil preparation has gone into getting that bed ready and cleared of weeds limed and everything like that i'm at the point now i think i'm nearly ready um with our, uh, uh, with our beds. I'm just waiting for the weather to warm up, but especially on the allotment, the beds are really come together, just clear a load of weeds. Um, and I think we are nearly there. Uh, Turbo Stream is now saying, oh, fish and chips. So yesterday, we're out walking the dog as we do. Was it yesterday? Or was it Monday? I th no, it was yesterday. Obviously, we're on the on the seaside here so we walked past the seaside along by the river down to the seaside we've got a lot of fish and chips busy tourist place that smell of all that fish and chips was in the air people sat by the river sat on the seafront eating fish and chips we came away wanting fish and chips and now you've made me want fish and chips again i, I can't have any but i want some uh digwell says the 10 second rule when you drop food on the floor yeah Absolutely, yeah, yeah. 10 second rule. Everyone runs that, don't they? Uh, Anna Jones says, I think your own compost will win by a country mile at the Veg Ground podcast. I've got to admit, the compost I used on that, of my own stuff, wasn't the best I've ever made, but I'm hoping it is going to be the best compost um, for growing the, the best potatoes. But it all depends. It all depends on what happens when we, we empty it out, of course. Um, I certainly think my own compost is going to produce the most amount of potatoes. It's all going to boil down to the slug damage and things like that as well to see what does the best. Uh, Jenny says, I am a crammer incarnate. They help each other enjoy each other's company most of the time. Even then, don't plant those, even the don't plant those together plants tend to do well most of the time. Honestly, I've seen some of those, um, those memes going around that say don't plant these plants together and i'm looking at it and going but they do really well together so sometimes i think people come up with their own rules um sorry you had that two dig well hope the other ones do better for you i got some sylvia grow instead and it's amazing yeah silver grow i've seen quite a bit of silver grow that seems to be doing really well uh, I need to make some new beds so I have somewhere for beds to grow. Yeah, we will 
we all needed more beds. I've fitted, built a new bed on my allotment yesterday. And uh, I'm looking at it thinking, why didn't I do this before? Just more room. We all more room. Uh, Nigel says, the peat free composts out now are just potluck, even between the same brand. This is what we're finding. Expect, except. Expect the next few years to be a bumpy ride. I'm beginning to stop up, stock up with peat based to keep me going for another year. There's a lot of decent peat, decent peat based compost available that's been sold off cheap at the moment. I've noticed that, but um, the peat free composts. I mean, I, I, you've probably seen this. Morrison's was selling the Koya compost to me. This stuff, this stuff, um, Koya, grow Koya compost, two of these for 15, 14 pound it was. So that makes, each box makes 75 litres of compost. But you do need to mix nutrients and stuff in with it as well. Uh, I'm hoping that's going to perform well, but we'll see what in the future. Jenny says, Aldi Peat Free Multipurpose was amazing yesterday. Very fine, feels lovely, and very dark, and three ninety nine dollars for 40 litres. I've used Aldi in the past, and I was quite impressed with it, but I found, again, it, the quality between different bags and different batches was so mixed that I um, wasn't overly happy with it. Turbo Stream, I'm ready for my plantings. Beds hoed and ready to rock. I mulched them in the autumn. Excellent, yeah. Yeah, that's what I like to hear here. Uh, Kate, I'll have a look at the old one, yeah. Uh, Katie, John, Rambo, McDonald. I get down the shore after a tide. Seaweed heaven, best stuff, yeah. Especially on asparagus. I, I collect a lot of seaweed to throw over my asparagus. And actually, I've noticed this. My asparagus is starting to show itself as well. Won't be long until we can start harvesting some delicious asparagus spears. And I cannot wait. I love 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 asparagus that and rhubarb and all the other good stuff is coming along just so well at the moment Stuart jackson says all my potatoes have been planted in my own compost so it's a lot cheaper than shop compost well this is what i want to find out the trouble i have when it comes to our own compost i'm sure i'm not the only one is being able to produce enough compost for all our needs i i, I just cannot produce enough compost no matter how hard I try. Turbo stream. I have 12 small seed potatoes, main crop to plant. I'm thinking of using the leaves to top up the bags I have with a compost layer at the bottom. Would this work? Would it work with leaves from that leaf fall? Uh, it might. I can't see it not working. Give it a try. Let us know. Give it a try and let us know. Be a good experiment to talk about. Uh, Digwell says, did you know that chip shops don't use real vinegar? It's non-brewed condiment made from water, acetic acid fla flavorings, and caramel coloring. Yes, I know. And it's not just uh, not just fish and chip shops that use it. You'll find there's a lot of places, even in supermarkets, you can buy it as well. Uh, Nigel says, Koya can work out expensive when you're pricing the cost of adding feeds and nutrients. Yeah, I it can. I agree with you on that. You meant to really add um, peat-free compost to it as well it, it, to really get some good use out of it. Um, <coughs> but I'm just hoping that Koya will be as good. I'm, I'm using it now um, just because there was a good deal going on compost. Just cannot believe the price of compost at the moment. It's just gone so high. Everything's gone high. I decline the salt and vinegar in the chip shop. Much prefer my salt and malt vinegar instead. I've I've got to have salt and vinegar for my. But we often sit on the beach and eat ours, so it goes down so well. It's that smell, something about being on the beach and your smell of fish and chips. Sea salt can have microplastic in it. Himalayan salt much better. Everything's pretty much got microplastic in it these days, hasn't it? Uh, potatoes will grow in anything. Ideal for broken, breaking up new ground. Funny enough, that's why I planted it in my new bed as well, because it's going to help deal with the cooch grass in that first year too. Um, cooch grass, massive problem on my, on my alignment. This new bed has been grass for the last seven years, so... Potatoes. Uh, what I wish I'd done with my allotment when I first took it on is just grow potatoes 
throughout the whole area. Um, I think that would have been the, the good way to deal with the cooch grass. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, I'm going to top up my potatoes with grass cuttings and then more compost in the top and repeat. I'm hoping it's going to work. I always use grass cuttings as a mulch, but definitely would work. Definitely works. And more compost, obviously, also good. Um, Nigel says, fish and chips on the beach or alongside a fish and harbour. Exactly what we've got here. I'll tell you what. Oh, it's heaven, isn't it? It's just heaven, isn't it? Uh, Jenny says, I am nowhere near ready. Big new bed is still lawn, but it's okay loads of times. Luckily, I mix planting and don't follow a planting plan. So if ready, it goes when I am ready for it. Um, yeah, whatever works, whatever works. I think it's very easy to get bogged down with dates and, and what have you, and then you feel behind and you get stressed. Mother Nature doesn't have a timetable. Always remember that. Right, guys, let's do a grow along video. This week we uh, we said we were going to grow cucumbers. I've set this up slightly different because I'm going to start putting these videos out as their own independent videos as well later on in the week. But cucumbers for this week is what we're sowing. Right, well, hello everyone. Now, each week on our live stream, we do what we call a grow along, which is basically me just sowing a few seeds and the audience is invited to sow seeds along with us and we share tips on how to sow these i'm saying this because i'm planning to put these videos out as standalone videos each week as well so this week we are sowing some cucumbers and i've got quite a few cucumber seeds to sow down here so the first batch that we have here are these cucumbers that are called Beth Alpha. We've got, there should be 10 of these. So all we do is just take a single seed and push it into the ground. Now I filled these, uh, these trays up with basically seed sowing compost and a mixture of pyrolite. And I'm using these sort of plug plant starters just for convenience i find that cucumbers can grow pretty quickly and therefore that can lead them to being a bit uh, uh quick to pop down roots so by having them a bit more space we can prick these out straight into pots as and when needed we've actually got more than 10 in this lot so this is good this is good so we are going to have so there we go we have got 16 4 8 12 16 of those we're just going to cover them back over and what I'm going to do next is a second pack of seeds. These are ones I've sent to from Saturn's as part of an experiment. And these are called Cucumber Bella F1. It should be four seeds in this packet, it says. So let's have a look. I'll try and get these out. Not easy to get out sometimes. Let's open the packet up completely to see what we've got there we go four seeds as expected as claimed on the pack so again we'll get those into the trays and ready to go now I should say what I want to do is get everybody to share their tips on growing cucumbers down in their comments. I know that often we put cucumbers and tomatoes in the same greenhouse, but actually they do need slightly different conditions. So it's worth experimenting. Or if you're like me, you've got several greenhouses having one for cucumbers and one for tomatoes. They're quite easy to grow once you get the seeds established and growing um we, we've got to feed them with a tomato feed about once a week once they start flowering before then i like to use a seaweed feed to establish decent roots so this next one is a, a gherkin style i quite like gherkins cornican de paris so let's these seeds really need sowing today this year 
Um, how many seeds are in there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 seeds. So that should do pretty good for that. And that gives us a little bit more space in this tray to sow a few more seeds at a later date or later on. But don't worry about that for today. Yeah, a couple of weeks, every week with a tomato feed and they should do pretty well once they start flowering those flowers will of course turn into the fruits that we want to grow and then we harvest them what i find is they sometimes produce depending on the variety a prickly cucumber and once the prickles come off easily you know it's time to harvest them so that's what i find and again it does depend on the variety it's also worth noting that when it comes to cucumbers you often find only female varieties for sale that's because if their males are on the, the the branch they um they tend to lead to some sort of sour bitter tasting cucumbers which isn't what we want but if you have got a a, a non all female variety you've got to then remove the male flowers in order to avoid that but like i said check in the comments down below leave a comment on how to sow cucumbers or if you have any questions leave them down below as well and see if anybody else answers them right i'm going to keep these indoors until they germinate and then we will prick them out There we go, cucumbers are sown. So let's uh, share your cucumber growing tips in the comments. Uh, I will be putting that video out on as a standalone video. And also, what do you think we should sow next week for the grow along? Um, we've got plenty of plenty of things that we've sown and are doing really, really well. I've got to say the basil has started to show itself. Uh, I should start taking photos to show you guys. Peas haven't done anything, which is unusual, but... Uh, Quite a bit has been doing well. Um, what have we got? What have we got going back? I'm talking about fish and chips a lot, so we'll, we'll, we'll pass over those because I'm getting hungry. Digwell says, cucumbers next week for me, so far behind. There we go. Well, that ties in nicely with the grow along. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I'm waiting till later in April to sow the squash and cucumber seeds. Yeah, you know. Cucumbers aren't too bad, but it's the, the pumpkins and stuff I would wait for. Adrian says, going back to sheep's wool, sheep's wool it, it, sh it could have some chemicals in it. But well, well, I'll, I'll be interested to find out. Ian says, off to Blackpool with the grandkids next week. Looking forward to fresh fish and chips for tea. Don't forget for mushy peas. Are oh, you making me hungry again? Every week you seem to do this. <laughs> um, Jenny says, microplastic has been found in breast milk. Humans have broken the planet. Shocking, scary, and completely avoidable. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, Nigel says, tip with cucumbers, water from below. Good idea. Good tip. That way you don't get this stem rot. So water them from below is a very good tip indeed. Stuart Jackson says, I will be growing my cucumbers outside this year. Then I will have no. Then I'll have more room for my tomatoes in the greenhouse. Most tomatoes will do okay outside. Um, as you know, I've spoken about this many times. I've got one a lot, one greenhouse on the allotment for tomatoes, the other for cucumbers this year. Adrian says, going back to sheep's wool, it could have chemicals in it if they have been dipped. Not many people dip nowadays, and I don't know what use wool would be as they as would be slow to rot down. Oh, so the dipped wool would might be slow to rot down. Okay, interesting, interesting. Turbo string cucumbers say twice as many as you need. The slugs will eat the first batch. Good tip. That's a very good tip as well. Jenny says, not so my cucumbers yet. A few varieties to try. I don't look forward to sowing cucumbers. I find them be such divas. They can be. You're right there. They can be. Uh, I always find the the the, the biggest problem, of course, is stem rot, which is why watering from below is is quite a key thing. Bally Sue says, Stuart, I've never been successful growing cucumbers outside. Maybe I'm far too far north in Belfast. 
you should be okay. You should be okay growing them outside. I mean, cucumbers are a a, a tropic plant, but they they are known to do okay outside. So I should think you'd be okay. Uh, Jenny says they are like stroppy teenagers, and Idaho says I like the diva cucumbers. Uh, Nicola says my number one tip is you need to take them out of the packet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and he says the camera centered in the greenhouse makes you look like you're a World War II fighter airplane like the Harvard I kind of like that look as well actually I've kind of done that on purpose it's I mean that is that is on the GoPro as well so you get a bit of a uh, fish eye lens on it but uh, I like it I like it a lot I might try the other camera one day uh, they don't need pollination says Idaho well that's why you remove the males well don't want the uh, the bitter tasting cucumbers. Uh, Digwell says, even though I have a greenhouse, all of my stuff grows outside. You need more greenhouses. <laughs> it's my my key to that. Um, my greenhouse at home is for seed sowing. My greenhouse is on the allotment: one for tomatoes, one for cucumbers. Stuart says, this will be my first year growing cucumbers outside. I will let you know how it goes. Um. Jenny says, Suttons have a great pea for making mushy peas. Oh, do like mushy peas. Do like mushy peas. Digwell says to Ballycillian, grow ridge cucumbers. That's a very good point, actually. Ridge cucumbers. Um, they should do much better outside. <laughs> Excuse me. Turbo Streamlin says, last year I sowed three cucumber plants. The slugs ate a lot. I couldn't be bothered to re-sow, so no cucumbers last year. I always think it's well worth trying cucumbers. I love cucumbers. I personally like the little cucumbers as well, the, the gherkins. Uh, we pickle those. I know not everybody likes pickled cucumbers, but I love them. I love them. I think they're delicious. Kate says, mine failed spectacularly last year, so I'm having none of that this year, and I'll find a way to grow them. Start in the hydroponics and normal soil to see if there's difference. That would be a great experiment, actually, Kate. I'd love to see the difference between the hydroponics and the normal soil. If you could do that, that would be really, really interesting, in all honesty. Right, guys, so what seeds do you think we should sow next week? I'm... I'm personally thinking dill, the herb dill might be a good one. But what do you guys think? I'm just going to have a swig of my coffee. I'm quite fond of dill, especially, especially as it goes with cucumbers. But uh, it's up to you guys to choose what we should sow next week. As I said, I'm going to put that video out as its own standalone video because... Well, I'm making it anyway, so I might as well. And I could do with making a few more like that of um, these videos. Or each week do a grow along video like that to see what we can what we can grow each week. I think every week we can sow seeds. Every week. Unless I'm on holiday or something, which ain't going to happen anytime soon. <coughs> Any ideas on what to sow next week? And keep sharing your cucumber tips as well. Um, as I said during that video, I like to use a tomato feed to feed our tomatoes once they start flowering. Obviously, tie them in as they grow as well. Um, I don't ever remove the lower leaves because I never feel the need to do that with those. But if they start to go yellow or change colour, then that is the time to remove the bad leaves just because they're not doing any good and i find that's good for good housekeeping um i, I i've forgotten what mission i set for everyone last week so I, I, you have to remind me oh was it something to do with compost i can't remember cannot remember so we but we need a mission for nick for this week as well um I want to see your cold frames or your, your if you have a cold frame. I want to see your cold frames. So please do share a photo of your cold frames where you're set up uh, over the next week. Um, 
Richard, do you think it, I'm too late to grow some more tomatoes and chilies? I have a decent amount already, but wanted to give lots to friends. The poly is nearly 40 degrees, so they could get some good heat. Tomatoes are, will be fine. Tomatoes will be fine. Chilies might be a little late, but at 40 degrees, you might get away with it. Uh, I'm not sure who, who that is. I'm sorry. It, Facebook in the group works a bit differently. Um, tomatoes, absolutely. Chilies. You need to be quick, I would say. Chilies need a, quite a long growing season. Oh, it was Amanda. Sorry, it was Amanda. Yeah, chilies need a long growing season. At 40 degrees, you might get away with it. But, uh, yeah. Turbo Stream says last week was a cellar band. So that's it. That's right. That is right. Um Stuart Jackson has said, as we're talking about fish and chips, why not sell fennel? What's fennel got to do with fish and chips? Um, oh, fennel. I'm not a lover of fennel, but we could do it. But Digwell says, dill is good. One of the very best plants to grow as a companion. It helps almost everything except other amplifiers. I, I'm leaning towards dill. I th um, Kate also says dill. It's one I've struggled to grow with for some reason. I think we'll do deal. I, th I think deal is going to be a good one as well. Uh, my cold frame is my veggie pod. Does that count? Absolutely it counts. Yeah, please do. I want to see your cold frames for the next week. Jenny says, what varieties of cucumbers are you all growing? I have crystal apple, dragon egg, white wonder, crystal lemon, Armenian yard long, gherkin, binlo, pickling, and market mall. I think I've got some gher gherkin, binlo, pickling as well to get, get in the ground, in the there. Um, plus, there was a plus I sent cucumber seeds out this, this month in the uh, supporters club. So you should have those as well, Jenny. Um, they were the Beth Alpha ones, if I remember correctly. Um, herbal fennel, great with fish. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got to admit, I, I, I don't like aniseed, so I've never really grown fennel. So, yeah. Um, could you do some basil too? Mine's never successful and I need lots as companions. So I actually did do basil a few weeks ago, which has germinated in the kitchen. But I will be sowing more, more basil in the future. Um, mine's never successful. It, I think basil does need a bit of heat to get going is what I would say. Uh, but yeah, I have got basil. I'll, I'll take a picture and show you it because it's just germinated. It's been very, very slow. And I do need to grow lots of basil this year. Lots and lots of basil. Turbo stream, my cold frame was sat on by foxes, so I dismantled it. I will have to show my seed bed instead. Yeah, that'd be great, actually. I do like a good seed bed too. My seed bed that I grew or started off in... Um, in the cut greenhouse is doing really well, really, really well. Nigel says, so carrots. Didn't we do carrots? Yeah, we did carrots a few weeks ago, didn't we? We did do carrots a few weeks ago in the veggie pod. Um, or was it spring onions? I'm sure we did carrots. I'm sure we did carrots. <laughs> I really should. I, I write on the labels what we've said, but I really do need to keep track of it the better. Because I forget sometimes. Um, Nicholas says, I get some gherkins cheap in B&Q, 20p a packet. That's cheap. That's very cheap. I do like gherkins. As I said, I've got some more seeds. I'm going to grab those in a minute. Ordeal tastes great. I've always, I have always have fennel salad with my fish dishes. Okay, I've never, never I'd said I don't like aniseed, so never thought about that. Turbo Stream says, I need to sow the nasturtium seeds. Good idea. Good idea. And Kate says, I actually put the cucumber seeds you sent out in the hydroponics. Ah, excellent. That would be great to see how they get on in hydroponics. I've I've always had a, a bit of fascination with um, what is going on. Uh, Bally Sillian says, my cold frame is more of a warm frame. I have it on a polytunnel bench to insulate 
cut chili peppers, etc. as the polytunnel cools down at night. And I want to see it. Let, let's see it. That's that. Um, Jenny says, not got my supporters club seeds yet. Has everyone else got theirs? Let me know if yours, they should have arrived by an hour. Uh, no, it should have. I posted them on the first. That's been over nine days ago. Um, Digwo got his yesterday. That has bloody Royal Mail. It's just so. Stuart Jackson, no seeds this much. Uh, right. I'm going to start getting them in the post a little bit earlier. That's re... They're not gone on strike or anything, have they, Royal Mail? Um, they went in. They went. Oh, Rebecca got mine ages ago. Uh, and Amanda, mine came on Tuesday, Wednesday. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, Richard Golden got his cake. I got mine seeds. So, Jenny, let me know if you don't get them and I'll send another pack out to you. But that's, that's always annoying, isn't it? Um, where, where were we? Where were we? Uh, D Grouse says, You need a planner to record what you have sown. Uh, I do try and record uh, what I have sown and when. Um, it's more, <laughs> I write on the labels for the grow alongs to try and obviously I sow other seeds, I sow supporters club seeds, trying to keep them all organized. Uh, but you're probably right, I probably do need some sort of planner or something to to remind me what we've sown and when. Um, I'll figure something out for that. I will figure something out for that to keep it going. Rebecca says, have we done a beetroot grow along? No, we haven't. That's one we can do in the future, actually. Um, that's a good one, actually. Beetroot. Beetroot. Love beetroot. Absolutely delicious. And yeah, we'll do a beetroot sow along at one day. We'll do deal next week. We'll do fennel time, basil at one time, and beetroot. We've got quite a few get through now, haven't we? It's busy, busy, busy with a seed sowing. Uh, Hargrove Gas got his. Excellent. And uh, Digwell says, it all depends on the sorting delivery office. I have the same issues with sending seeds. Luckily, no plug plants have been delayed yet. Yeah, I mean, I post them all at the same time, so they should all, in theory go out together but it's always frustrating isn't it you know i never and i i i i i've always had a lot of faith in the postal service until but um there's no other options unfortunately anymore and there are but they they still rely on royal mail and um I don't know if there's any strikes going on or anything. Uh, Richard Golden probably would, could tell me if there's strikes going on, but I don't think they are. I don't think they are. Uh, Royal Mail are still having problems. They make sure the parcels are worked first as there is more money in parcel post. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, well, I'll look into options. I'll look into options and see what we can do. Well, but yeah, as I said, I always send them out on the last working day of a month so that i know they are they are gone and it usually gives us plenty of time but i i might start doing it a bit differently instead terry stream pickled beetroot sharp cheese and pickled onions is a summer favorite of mine i do like beetroot i do like beetroot indeed pickled onions as well i've got some i saw some pickled onion seeds i must sow those as yeah i'm going to do those in the veggie pod that's an idea, isn't it? Growing pickled onions in the veggie pod. Um, that might, that should do quite well, I reckon. Or a few in a veggie pod and a few. Yeah. Yeah. I do like, I do like pickled onions, the silver skin onions. We're getting well away, aren't we? I do like those. Right. We are coming. We've got about 10 minutes left of the show. So if anybody does want to zap in for the final 10 minutes, the link is going up in the comments. Um, I do think the, these grow-alongs are seeming to be pretty popular. So if anybody does want us to grow any particular seeds, then throw down for suggestions because I do got to come up with some plans. You know, I'm trying to 
trying to plan these uh, these live shows in advance a bit more um, in order to make to try and get some sort of consistency and get everything planned out ahead. So I'm always planning, planning, planning. So everything is open. Everything is open. Anne Wright says beetroot and cheddar sandwich. Yum. Oh, you get me hungry again. I mean, fish and chips. Now, beetroot and cheddar sandwich. Ah, oh, yeah. Golden gourmet shallots for pickling. Yeah, pickled shallots work just as well. But pickled onions, got to grow those. Digwell says, I have had four out of five booked collections not collected, so I had to rush to the Royal Mail delivery office with the plants. Yeah. Yeah. It's annoying, isn't it? It's annoying when your business basically relies on royal mail and you need them to do what we're paying them for basically so therefore richard we will get them in the next few days please don't worry i'm sure we will understand i do worry because uh, the, 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 i i worry i do worry because i want you to get them um pickled bunions that's turbo stream calls and pickled onions pickled bunions yeah it's a classic but you can't beat cheese and beetroot yeah we're gonna have to do um we're gonna have to do cheese and beetroot sandwiches i'll tell my wife to make those for my lunch one day good things are worth waiting for seeds are always a joy so worth the wait yeah well we always we we we, we always try and make sure the seeds are good i only finished my 2022 pickled shallots a few weeks ago still crunchy double dehydration is the way to go tell us more about this digwell Double dehydration. And what did you do? Excuse me for your pickled shallots. Because normally what I do with our onions is I sort them, let them live for about 24 hours, let the water come out and try and drain the water off as much as possible. And then um, wash them, obviously, and then pickle those. Do you do what's double dehydration? Kate's asking the same thing. Um, what's double dehydration? Digwell says I've had to pop my prices up due to the postage rate increase. There, uh, it is. It is uh, postage rate has gone up. There are cheaper ways I'm looking into, but I'm a bit unsure at the moment. Shark fin that would be a big grow along. Don't worry, I'm only joking. I would do a shark fin grow along, but I think too many people would be afraid of it. Uh, my favourite sandwich as a child was cheese and pickle. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Pickled recipes. We've got to come up with some pickled recipes. Perhaps there's something we can do on a future live stream. Pickled recipes. I'm sure Digwell, I'm writing it down now. I'm sure Digwell will come up with some great ideas for that. There we go. Right, these things. Uh, Kate says, this year I started to like pickled onions. Isn't it weird how um, taste changes as you get older? But sadly, I'm not there with beetroot or olives yet. Um, I was thinking it's amazing how flavour changes. I never used to like curry. Now I love this stuff. It's my favourite meal. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Jenny says, I'm with you. Love cheese and beetroot sandwiches. I'm going to have to give it a try. I'm going to have to get some of those. Absolutely. I know you guys have great food combinations. I've never heard of beetroot and cheddar sandwiches or pickled beets, cheddar and pickled onions. Peaking my curiosity and taste buds. You know what? I think we're going to have to come up with some good um, chutney or beetroot pickled recipes one week. We might do that in, in not too distant future. Like I say, next week, I want to see your plots. I want to do a... Um, uh plot tour videos if you can send them in if i don't get enough videos i will come up with a subject uh tanya reynolds lovely to see you ferments she says and we're talking about this double dehydration fermenting or well, uh, ferments as a future recipe the future idea fermented food got you that is actually a very good one to recipes that's a good one as well actually fermented recipes yeah i'll throw that in there thank you tanya Nigel says, I soak the onions in malt vinegar for about three months, then pour out half the vinegar and top up with water. Keeps at least two years. They are usually all gone by then. Yeah. Yeah. 
Definitely that. Definitely that. Uh, Deagwell says, salt them for 24 hours, then do the same with sugar for 24 hours. As much water comes out on the second day as a first. Damn, another secret gone. I never thought that's a good idea. I never thought of that. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, uh, um, Steve. I like that. Kate says, I'm doing a fermented food course at the end of the month. It should be interesting. Kate, we might have to borrow you for this fermented food recipe uh, episode then. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Nigel says, first night, sprinkle with salt and cover with a towel. Yeah, pickled onions. Love it, love it. It's the smell as well, isn't it, in the house um, when you're doing all those sort of things. I mean, we, we sit there with TV on, peeling all the onions to get rid of all um, to get rid of all the skins and then salt those, and that smell just ferments right through the house. Absolutely fantastic. Uh Tigwell says to Ido, try cheddar cheese with strawberry jam and crackers. Gert Lush. Oh, I'm getting hungry now. I'm getting hungry. I've had roast lamb today. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to eat something. Cheese and crisp sandwich is nice too, or potato chip for Ido, garden girl. Cheese and crisp sandwich, yeah. Um Jenny says, okay, I've been looking at doing a fermented food course. I really want to learn and go back to the old methods of storing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've always wanted to do more of the old methods, canning and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Again, that's something we might have to talk about on a future episode. Uh, Kate says, can you get Branston Pickle over there? I love that. Oh, to, to Idaho. Yeah. Can you get Branston Pickle? Have, Anyone like pickled red cabbage? Yes, I do. I love pickled red cabbage. In fact, you know, um, my wife makes this. You know the cabbage you get with a kebab when you buy a kebab from a kebab shop? Those, those always bad, cabbage, bad kebabs. We actually made our own cabbage. It was more fermented cabbage, and it was really nice. Really, really nice. Um, yeah. Tanya says, Sandor Katz is the ferment guru. He's on YouTube. I will check him out. Thank you, Tanya. We will do that in the future, definitely. Toby Stream says, bring out the Branston. Indeed. But he said, need the next three minutes to pass so I can eat. You all have me starving. I know. Luckily, it's only about a minute to go. So I am going to run on in and get some food. Digwell says, I only grow red cabbage to pickle. Yeah, don't we? Don't, don't I, I love red cabbage? I mean, I've just planted out some cabbage today. Love red cabbage. Love pickling it. Love just eating cabbage, nonetheless. Um, oh, Nicola says I bought twenty kilna jars in IKEA's clearance for pickles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Funny enough, this hopefully this week we're having new larders built into our house, and we want to do a lot of that sort of thing you know, kilna jars that we open up and see them all looking beautiful and lovely uh, for that same reason. Oh, um, Kate says, we're going to start wrapping up in a minute, but the course I'm doing is a lady who did a brilliant kombucha course. Kombucha, kombucha course. She recommended Sandor Cats too. Oh, kombucha, yeah, I'm going to check him out. I will check him out later on. Joe Jackson says salted runner beans. Dad used to do this, but I can't remember what it tasted like. Interesting. Um, I can't use malt vinegar. Need a good alternative. Uh, try the chip shop stuff, says Digwell. Uh, there you go. Turbo Stream says plot tour and cold frames next week, everyone. Yep, yeah, plot tours. So let's see your plots. Cold frames. Want to see your cold frames as well next week. And we're going to be sewing some deal next week as well. So lots to get through next week. Have a great week, everyone. Still got tomorrow. Well, most of us have still got tomorrow off work because some of us don't work anyway. But you lucky, lucky people who are in that position. Um, so make the mess of it. 
Rebecca <laughs> says we always bring it back to the food. Well, that's why we grow our vegetables, isn't it? Uh, but you are very, very good at making me hungry, and I am starving now. But it's always good. I um, I'm, I'm going to be talking about growing cabbages on the podcast tomorrow. If you are interested in that, I will do a supporters club podcast as well when I finish um, but I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday at 6pm where we do it all again so until then guys please take care <laughs>